Hi everybody, welcome to this video. This video will take a closer look at React Hooks, this exciting new thing you might have heard about that was released in the React world, um, where everybody is talking about it. And I will introduce you to Hooks, explain how they work, why we use them, and how we use them, of course. We'll work on this little demo project here where we can uh, fetch information about Star Wars characters, right now written in the old school style, which is still fine, but more on that in the video, but written in that style with classes and component that mount and so on. And we'll transform all of that to use React hooks. Now also check out the article, which you find in the video description, where you can basically read um, this video or the content of this video, wherever you find it in written form, which might also be helpful. So with that, let's dive in and let's convert this project here to the React Hooks version where we use React Hooks everywhere. Obviously, the biggest question might be, what are React Hooks? Maybe you haven't heard about them yet, which is totally fine, they are pretty new. React Hooks is a new feature that was added to React, React.js with React 16.8. And in that feature, we can use React hooks, which essentially allows us to use functional components only. That's the main thing you could say. Previously in React projects, you had to use class-based components if you wanted to use state or you wanted to use lifecycle methods. Now you can use functional components for everything because React hooks this new feature, which by the way has absolutely nothing to do with lifecycle methods, also called lifecycle hooks sometimes. They have nothing to do with that. So React hooks is a new feature that allows you to use functional components for everything because with React hooks you can manage state in functional components and you can achieve the same thing you did with lifecycle methods in functional components now. So that's the one big thing. The other big thing is that with React hooks, sharing possibly stateful logic between components uh, gets easier. And so let's have a look at React hooks and let's learn how we uh, move from a class-based world, so components that use the class keyword because they use state or lifecycle methods, how we move that to the functional with hooks world. And uh, for that, of course, we have to convert a couple of things. Most importantly, state and set state. In class-based components, you're using that all the time to update internal data. How does that now look when you're using React hooks? Well, there you got a so-called hook, and I will show you how to use it in a second, which is called use state, which is essentially a function you can import from the React package and then call in your functional component that will allow you to manage state in your component. So let's have a closer look at that. So for that, I'm back in my project here, and this is the code for uh, this demo project here, which essentially renders a dropdown where we can uh, choose from a couple of Star Wars characters, and then we load information about that character. We can also switch our site here, which uh, basically just colors this dropdown. And if we're in the dark side mode, we can also press destroy and get rid of everything. And uh, that is simply there so that we can uh, see a couple of different hooks in action. Now, please also note that this list of Star Wars characters here is also fetched dynamically when I reload, um, as you can tell by the fact that you see loading characters here. So that is the functionality of this application. And as we often have for applications like this, we got class-based components in all the places where we need to manage state or have lifecycle hooks, like our app component, uh, but then also our char picker, which is that drop down in the end, or that character component, which is that info box. The summary component here is already a functional component because it's a pure presentational component that outputs information and that does not manage any state. Now that's the old world. In the new world with React hooks, you still have presentational components and it's still a good idea to not manage state in every single component just because you can. It's still good to have as many presentational components as possible and manage state in a few selected container components. That does not change just because you now can use functional components only. But what does change is that you don't have to use uh, class and create components in a different way just because you want to use state. And let me demonstrate this here with the app component where we do have state. We can create this as a functional component now. That means we can create a constant here, name this app 
for example. And in there, we would get props and uh, then just to have our function body, which in the end needs to do what? It needs to return some JSX. That is what a function needs to do to qualify as a functional component in React. Now we do have that render method in which we do return JSX. So since we converted this to a function now, we just have to remove that render call here. So we remove that render method and just have content in here, which I then return in the end. So now we have a function that returns JSX and therefore it's a perfect functional React component. We're exporting this here, but the problem is that of course we had state in there and this does not work anymore. Well, since React 16.8, and hence you should make sure that the project uses that version, this project, which you of course find attached to this video in the video description, of course uh, is already set up to support uh, hooks. So since React 16.8, you can use that special new method I mentioned on the slide. We don't need to import component anymore, but now we can import that use state method from React. And that's already something important. You will recognize or see that all these built-in hooks which React ships now with start with use and then the, the main name of the hook, so to say. So this is the state hook, the, the hook that allows you to manage state. And therefore, it's called use state. Now, you can also create your own hooks and um, that is now not the main thing I want to focus on, but you can do that. And there, the convention should be that you name them use something too. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on use state for now. So we have use state here. And how can we now manage state with that? Well, we can call use state and we can pass an initial state to that function. Now, of course, since we had a state like this, we can just grab that object and pass it to use state. The question is, what does this do for us? What does use state do? Use state returns something. Use state returns an array. And this is an array that always, always contains exactly two elements. The first element of that array that use state returns will always be your current state. So at the beginning, your initial state, but then later once you start changing it, more on that in a second, it will be that updated state. So here we can use array destructuring, which is a modern JavaScript syntax where you have square brackets on the left side of the equal sign to pull out elements of that array and store them in separate variables or constants here. You can name these constants however you want and I will name this um, state, for example, and uh, we might rename this later, but for now let's go with that. But this can be any name, doesn't have to be state. Now I said there are two elements and um, the first element is your current state. So basically a snapshot of your state. And uh, whenever this component re-renders or this function therefore reruns, we basically get uh, the latest state. The second element obviously has to be something that allows us to change that state. And indeed the second element we get here is a function, which we can name set state, but again, you can name this however you want, that allows us to override our current state so that state is updated. These two elements are always returned in an array by use state. Now, what can we do with them? Well, we can start using them similarly to how we used them before. Of course, we had some methods in this uh, component before. And the good thing is you can, in JavaScript in general, not just in React, define functions inside of functions. So we have a function here this app function here, we can define a function in there by simply storing this side handler in a constant. Now this is a constant that holds this arrow function. We can do that for all three methods. We can simply turn them into constants that hold functions. With that, this is valid syntax. Now we have to adjust the code uh, where we set the state. Previously, we called this set state here. Now, this is not uh, working anymore because this is not needed. We're not in a class anymore. The this keyword therefore is not required. Instead, set state is just a constant here. So we can just call set state here and here and here. And if you have named this differently up here, of course, you need to name it differently down there as well. So now we're using that set state method to set the state. Now, of course, in the other places where we use this, for example, to access the state, we also have to get rid of this and just access state 
which now refers to this constant. We're pulling out of that array. We're getting back. And um, we also have different places where we access state or where here, for example, we're trying to access this char select handler method we had before. Well, it's not a method anymore. It's now just a constant in this function. And therefore here, we just remove this and we're good to go. So quintessence is we remove this in all these places. Therefore, I'll select them all like this. Now here where I bind this, well, this really doesn't matter. I'm not using this in these functions. So it doesn't matter what I bind this to. But I'm still using bind here because I don't want to call the function here. I instead want to pass a reference to the function to the on click listener here, so to say. And therefore I do this and I use bind here to tell JavaScript, hey, when this side handler function is getting called, then please pass in an argument of light or dark. And that is that argument I'm expecting here this one, the side argument. So this still needs to stay there, but it doesn't matter if you pass this or null as a this value really does not matter at all. And now we almost successfully conver converted this component to a functional component using React hooks or our first React hook. But there is a huge flaw here. And um, it'll be relatively easy to see it once we save that and try using that. Let me open the developer tools here as well. Reload the app and everything loads and let's go to the dark side. And uh, now we see we are getting an error here because I tried to fetch um, an undefined ID basically, could not fetch person. And uh, so something broke here. What's wrong if I switch this? Um, Okay, now we lost the dark side. So somehow our state is messed up, right? So something doesn't work correctly. There is a huge difference between this second element you're getting back from use state and how state is managed there in general and the state property you have in class-based components and this set state and what it does with it. There is a huge difference. And the difference is that the state returned by use state is not merged with state updates passed to the function here. Instead, when you call set state here, you override the entire state that was returned by this use state call with that new object or value you're passing in here. So where we have an initial state that looks like this, once site handler executes, we just will have a state object with a site property and the destroyed and selected character properties are lost. And because selected character is lost, for example, we had undefined here because that essentially uses the selected character. And if that is um, lost, if it's not part of our state anymore, it's basically undefined. So we need to merge it manually. So when we update our state here, we can pass in an object, but we should first of all use the spread operator to get all the properties of our existing state. And remember, state is that constant returned by uh, use state here in the end. And then we override a part of it. And we do this here for all these state updates. So everywhere where we call set state, we manually merge it by copying everything that's in our state. And then we change only what we want to change. And with this adjustment, now I can go to the dark side and it still works. And it also still works and keeps the dark side if I switch the character. Now that's of course good, but manually merging this can be cumbersome, can be a problem. It's not the best user experience. So is there something we can do about that maybe? Well, the good thing is, unlike in class-based components, you're not limited to one state property. And that's also the reason why with class-based components, set state did merge your updates with the old state. Now that's not the case anymore because you can simply define multiple states. So here we could create a new state here with use state. Let's say one state for managing that side and we start with light. That's the next important takeaway. State doesn't have to be an object. Here, it's just a string. It could be a number, it could be an array, whatever you need. So here, I'm also getting back my current state. So at the beginning, this string here. And therefore we can just name this, for example, well, side or so, uh, chosen side, whatever you want, I'll take chosen side. And again, we still, we always get back these two elements. So we get back that second element that is a function where I can 
uh, set my chosen side. And you can name this whatever you want. But of course, it makes sense to name this set chosen side because you do set your chosen side with that function. Now we can remove the side here from our first state. Now there I have my selected character and destroyed. These two things are not directly related and they're also not updated together. So maybe we want to split that into two different states. So again, let's uh, create a new state here with use state. And there I pass in one, so my selected character value. And therefore here I'll name this selected character and set selected character. And here my state also is not an object but just a number, so just my ID basically. Now let's introduce a third state for that destroyed thing. And there I'll, just as before, call use state, set this to false initially. So here um, I'm basically setting the value I had in there too. And I'll name this destroyed and set destroyed. What this means is that I of course can now get rid of this first uh, use state demo here. And uh, I'll actually just comment it out, but you could delete it, of course. And now we have to adjust our code. Here, where I call set state, referring to this set state um, constant here, I'm updating my site, so I will instead call set chosen site. And the value, of course, now just has to be a string, because my chosen site uh, state here is just a string. Now, site, which I'm getting here, is a string, it's this argument. And therefore, I can simply set set chosen site to side, like that. Now, I also have the char select handler. And there, previously, I set my selected char to the uh, char ID. Now I can set selected character, which is this function I'm pulling out of that use state result. And I set this to char ID, which is just what I'm getting here. Now, little side note, that here will actually be a string. Here I initialize it with a number. That is totally fine. But to be totally in line, I will convert this to a string up here as well. Now last but not least, for the destruction handler, I'll set destroyed to true here, because that is the update I want to do. Now, of course, all the places where I reference state won't work anymore, but now I do have my separate state constants. I have chosen side, which holds my chosen side state. I have my selected character state and I have my destroyed state. So we have to use these constants down there now. So instead of side, well, this now just is chosen side. Instead of the state selected character, this is now just the selected character. Also here, of course. And uh, here for the side, it's also just side, no, excuse me, chosen side. That was the name I chose. And for destroyed, it's now just destroyed. And with that, everything should work as before, but we don't have to update manually. And I think it's also a bit more readable and easier to understand. Again, as I mentioned, everything works just as before. So that is our first transformation of that app component, which now uses React hooks or one React hook, the use state hook, which is arguably the most important React hook to, well, work as a functional component and still manage state. And you can use that use state hook in any functional component, only there though, not in class-based components. Now let's move on to a different component then, shall we? What about our char picker, which is that drop down here? There we uh, also have a state, we know how to manage that, but we also have a lifecycle method. And how do we work with that now in a functional component world? Because you can't add lifecycle methods like componented mount to functional components. But React hooks have a solution for that as well. So let's convert this char picker here to a functional component that receives props. And uh, for the state, first of all, well, you know how it works. We can import use state here. And now again, you could manage this as one state and manually update and merge it when you just need to change a part of it. Or what I will do here, you use two states. So I will have uh, one use state call here where I want to manage my list of characters and uh, another uh, use state call where I manage the loading state. And initially that is false. So here I name this uh, loaded chars, for example, and set loaded chars. And here I have is loading and set is loading or just set loading, whatever you want to name it. Now for component that mount, I'll come back to this in a second. Let's first of all fix our JSX code and use our updated state here. 
So we need to get rid of, rid of that render method. Uh, instead, we just return content, so our JSX code here. And now the places where I used this state, let's get rid of all this state assignments here and let's see how we have to adjust this. Now, instead of this state something, we have characters here, for example. Now, these characters here are my loaded chars. That's that loaded chars constant I set up here, which I get back from use state. Initially, it's empty, but we're about to load chars. Now, here, where I say this props, by the way, this has to be converted to just props. Because we're in a functional component, we do receive props here as an argument. So we adjusted props and the loaded chars up there. Now that's not all, of course. Here I also have my characters which I map. This have to be my loaded chars here. The rest here is okay. Down there where I have is loading, is loading is okay because I named this constant here is loading. So if you named it differently here, of course, you need to adjust it at the bottom of this file as well. Where I check for the existence of chars, well, I should check for loaded chars and also check loaded chars length here. With that, I think I replaced all places where I used state, but what about component did mount? Well, use state is a super important hook, but it's not the only one. React 16.8 adds a couple of nice React hooks and uh, to learn all about them, you can check the official docs, of course, to which you also find a link in the video description. But the second most important hook after use state is use effect. If you have component that mount, you can manage this with use effect now. Now, why is it named use effect and not use component that mount? Because use effect is there to manage side effects. So things like HTTP requests that happen in your components. And it works a bit different uh, then component did mount and I will show you how. So back in our code now, we should import use effect here. So use state and now also use effect. Now how does use effect work? You add it in your uh, functional component body like this and now use effect takes a function as an argument. So you can pass in an arrow function for example. This function will be executed for you by React on every render cycle after the, the DOM has been rendered, so to say, or after this component has been rendered, I should say, because there's a difference in React between the DOM being touched and your component being rendered in the virtual DOM. So after the component has been rendered, this will be executed. After, that's important. It does not execute here in this position before uh, we're rendering this, but after because we're not calling the code in there ourselves, but we pass a function here and React will execute that function for us and it does so once the render cycle finished for this component. So that sounds like a component did mount, right? That also executed after the component uh, ran. Side note, if you need component will mount, well, you can add any code that should execute before the component renders just here, right? This code executes top to bottom the render method or the, the JSX you return is at the bottom of the file. Anything you execute in front of that runs before React reaches JSX. But for component that mount, this sounds like a good idea. And uh, for that, let's uh, simply start by console logging something here. It works. And let's temporarily comment out component that mount so that this doesn't cause any errors. And uh, now let's save this and let's uh, wait for this to reload and we see it works. Great. If I switch to the dark side, I see it works too. So this means that since this runs in the char picker, that it runs more than once. Remember that component that mount only executes once when the component, well, mounts. And the char picker was not remounted here. So use effect certainly works differently. It runs more often than component did mount. And that is on purpose, but you can control it. Now before we control it though, let's add the logic we had in component did mount cut it and let's add it here instead of our console log statement and of course comment it back in. Now I'm using the fetch API to make an HTTP request here and um, then here I'm updating my state. This of course now works differently because I have set loaded charts and set is loading here. I also update my state here right at the start to show the spinner or the loading message. So here I want to set loading to true. Well we can just call set is loading and set this to true, right? That is pretty straightforward. Now down there, um, I need to update both states. 
I can call set is loading and set it to false because we're done. By the way, didn't do that before, but I also want to do that if we have an error. And I also need to update my loaded chars. So I can call set loaded chars and I set this to my result of this code here. This code here, excuse me. Which essentially takes the data I have in my response and transforms it a little bit to extract the data I need in this app, which is the name of the character and the ID of the character. And I see ID indeed uh, is a number, little false information by me here in app.js. Doesn't matter, it still works correctly when we change it, but we should change this to a number to, to be totally in line. But back to the char picker, we're setting our ID, we're uh, getting the char name. With that, we have a logic in here that should work. So if we save all these files and let this reload, um, that does not finish here. So I do set is loading to false though. Why does it not finish? Let's uh, throw in a console log statement where I say use effect runs. If we add this now, you see it runs here and then it runs again. So it runs too often. It should only run once because it should only run when it uh, fetches data for the first time. And it should not run again, which probably is related to why this is not really working here. And now you see I reloaded and we even get in an infinite loop here. And uh, that is not good, obviously. So let's um, change this by, for now, simply commenting out our uh, code in here in use effect and saving this so that in the browser we're uh, not uh, staying in that infinite loop process. Now what's the problem? Why did we have the infinite loop? Why does it not behave the way it should? Use effect runs after the render cycle, but it does so whenever this functional component is re-rendered. Now when is a component re-rendered in React? When props or state changes. Now props here certainly did not change, but state changes. In use effect, before I commented this out, we updated the state when the data was fetched from the server. Now the result is if we update the state when the data is there, well, then this code runs again. So the function re-renders, we go into that use effect function again and we make another request, we get new data, we update the state and we have an infinite loop. That's the problem. Now, to prevent this from happening, I'll bring this back in. Use effect takes two arguments. It does not only take a function here, which uh, should execute on every render or after every render cycle, basically. It takes a second argument that is an array of dependencies of that function we pass to use app effect. So basically an array where we have to state all variables that we use inside of that function we want to pass to use effect, or even if we don't use them there, that should basically decide if that runs again or not. So anything we pass to that array, if we pass a variable here, that means if that variable's value changes, then the function you passed to use effect should run again. Now the cool thing is, if you pass an empty array here, then you're basically saying, hey React, whenever this um, data I passed to you here, which is an empty array, whenever that changes, please run that function I passed to you again. Now it will always run it for the first time, but now subsequent executions are basically blocked because if we pass an empty array here, there is no data that could change, and therefore data never changes, and therefore this never re-executes. So use effect with an empty array as a second argument is your equivalent to component did mount. That is really important to remember. If I now save this with this tiny change, just that empty list added as a second argument, now this looks way better. Now we got an application that works just as before, where I can also switch to my dark side and everything, and it doesn't enter an infinite loop and it doesn't break. Because use effect with an empty array as a second argument is just like component did mount. The default is that use effect would run on every update of the component, but we can basically control when it should update by passing an array of dependencies. And if that array is empty, then there are no dependencies that could change and then therefore it will never run again. And with that, we converted the char picker to a functional component as well. Now use effect can of course run more often if you need it. And we'll see that in the character component now. This is also a component we created with the class keyword and we can convert this to a functional component. 
So I'll name this character, we get props, and we return our function body here. And um, we're managing state, so we certainly need to add use state here. Uh, we have should component update, which I'll take care about later. For now, let's uh, comment it out. We have component did update. That will be interesting to see how we can uh, implement that with hooks. We got component did mount. So we know that we can handle the logic in component did mount with use effect. So we certainly also need to import use effect here. And now let's start implementing this step by step. Let's start with the state. Here we have our loaded character. So I'll uh, set up a new use state call here, where I have uh, my loaded character, which is an empty object initially. And I'll name this loaded character. You can name it however you want. And I will add set loaded character here as the function that allows me to update that state. We also have is loading as a state here and therefore I will manage this again with set is loading and just is loading here with use state false. Now we can get rid of that state object here. We have our two um, use state calls. And before I focus on component that update and that mount, um, let me go down here. We also have component will unmount. We'll see how that works too. But first of all, I will get rid of render and also of one closing uh, curly brace. And where I used this state, well, we have to get rid of this state in all these places now. And instead we just use is loading because I have is loading as a constant here. And then I named this loaded character, which will eventually load from the web to loaded character. And therefore I can leave it as it is down there where I had this state loaded character. Now it's just loaded character. If you chose a different name up there with use state, you have to change all occurrences of loaded character down there, of course. So now for me, that JSX code actually should work, but of course the rest of the component won't. We'll have to take care about all these lifecycle hooks and I will comment out component will mount for, I will unmount for now. Fetch data is not a lifecycle hook or method, but it is a normal method. And you learned that you can have functions and functions. So we can convert this in a function by just adding const, or actually I'm converting it to a constant, I guess, that holds a function. So now we have fetch data in a const. Component that mount, we learned how we can handle that. We just add use effect and we add a function here. And that function gets a second argument, which is an empty array. And that allows us to replicate component that mounts behavior. This now only runs when this component loads. And there we just call fetch data, not this fetch data because uh, we're not in a class anymore, but just fetch data. And now let me actually move fetch data uh, to the top above these lifecycle hooks where I actually call it so that I call fetch data after I defined it. Not strictly required, but still uh, not the worst idea also for readability. Okay, so we got component did update left now. Let's comment it out for now and let's see if the rest works. Um, hmm. Cannot read property props of undefined. Well, the problem here should be that I have this props in here, yes. Um, places where you have this props should of course be changed to just props. So here I selected all occurrences of this props and replaced it with just props because we're getting props as an argument here. So now with that, we have a problem with set state. That makes sense because I replaced all the places where I used my state um, to output something. But if I'm changing it as I'm doing uh, here, of course, we don't have this set state anymore. Instead, we set set is loading to false here. Also, if we have an error and we need to set our loaded character. So I call set loaded character to that loaded character value I have here. And now we can get rid of that set state call down there. Loaded character, by the way, is this constant, which I'm constructing here with data that is returned by the server. And I also have a set state call here where I initialize loading. This also should be changed to set is loading where I set loading to true. Now with that, it reloads and we don't get an error and we can load data. If I choose a different character, nothing happens. And the reason for that is that component that update is commented out. That previously was responsible for waiting for updates to the component. And if the update was caused because our selected char changed, so that selected char ID, which we set by the dropdown, 
If that changed, then it fetched data again. Component that update does not exist here, but use effect exists in functional components, and use effect is used to replace component that update as well. Now remember that use effect generally runs after every render cycle. Now we can restrict that by adding a second argument, which is an array of dependencies, and if we specify no dependencies, it actually only runs once. Here we want it to run more often than once. So we can add a second use effect call here which uh, essentially does the same as the first one, which should execute whenever something changes, but now it's not an empty array, but it's, well, props selected char. Whenever that data changes, we want to re-execute that. That is our dependency. So we're referring here to the value that's stored in selected char in our selected char prop, and whenever that changes, it will rerun. So React is essentially doing that if check for us. Now this, however, would be bad code because in reality, both effects run when the component is rendered for the first time. So we send at least one redundant HTTP request and we have the same logic in there. So we can actually just get rid of this use effect call and use this one only. And it will run for the first render and then for subsequent renders when these renders are caused because of prop selected char. If something else changed, like for example, uh, we chose the dark side on our main uh, page here with that button, then it will not send another HTTP request. And of course, I can prove this by calling fetching data here or by uh, console logging this. And uh, actually here in fetch data, I already have a console log, so we would see when an HTTP request is sent. So we can remove that. With that, we have the logic that we had in component that update in here, but in a way simpler form, in a positive way. So if I now save everything, this loads and still displays this and we send an HTTP request and only one HTTP request. Just to prove my previous point, if I comment back in this other use effect call which runs when the component mounts, if I reload, you see we sent two requests and at least that is one redundant request because they all were both sent for the same ID. So we should definitely get rid of that. And now with that, we only get one. And if I now switch my character, this also updates correctly because we send a new HTTP request. If I choose a dark side here, you see no extra request gets sent. Um, if I go back to the light side, if I destroy this, we never send a redundant HTTP request. This would be different if I don't have that second argument here. If I remove that temporarily, now we fetch new data whenever the component re-renders. And now you see we have that infinite loop right from the start because of course the component re-renders whenever fetching data is done because in there, in fetch data, we do set new state and that causes the component to re-render. So that's not an option. We need that dependency. So with that, we have an application that generally works the way it should. Now, we also had component will unmount it there. And there I only locked something to the console, but maybe you have some important cleanup work in there that you wanna do. Now, the good thing is you can also do that with use effect. The way we used use effect thus far simply is that we have a function and the code in here executes after every render cycle. Use effect can also return something and that something has to be either, well, nothing, as it is the case right now, or it is another function. So here I can return another anonymous arrow function, for example, and the code in that function will now execute right before use effect will run the next time. It's a cleanup function that basically runs once use effect is done before it runs again. So here I can console log cleaning up, because you typically do cleanup work in here, like remove listeners or anything like that. And if I now save this, you see, use effect runs. We don't see the cleanup output, but if I choose a different character, you see cleaning up runs because it runs before every subsequent use effect call. So not before the first one, but thereafter. And if I go to the dark side and I destroy, you also see cleaning up. And I have a typo here, I know. But you also see cleaning up here because when I destroy this component, it's unmounted. And that is then the last time when this runs because if you add an empty pair of uh, brackets here, or you have a dependency, whatever this is the case, this cleanup function will also run a last time. So it allows you to implement a cleanup function that returns before every run of use effect and that also runs when the component is removed. And if you just want to run this 
when the component unmounts, then you can simply add use effect, just like use state, you can use this multiple times, where you maybe have absolutely no logic, but where you return your component will unmount function, so to say. And there I can console log component did unmount or will unmount. And now I pass my empty pair of square brackets, which means it only runs when the component mounts. And this is now the new information when it unmounts. And therefore now what we see is when I change something here, nothing happens. If I change the value here, cleaning up runs, but not component did unmount. But if I click destroy now, cleaning up and component did unmount runs because when you pass just square brackets here, this effect runs when the component mounts. Well, I'm not doing anything there, but the returned function now runs when the component unmounts. If you have dependencies as we have it here, then this runs, the effect runs whenever the dependencies change and your cleanup function runs right before that effect then runs for the second time and so on. And that includes the last time. So basically when you unmount, this is then included as well. So playing around with that is always a great idea in case this is confusing, but it's actually really straightforward. And therefore on this slide, it's not only component that mount that we handle with use effect, but also did update and also will unmount. Now what about should component update? How do we handle that with hooks? Well, we actually don't handle it with React hooks. React 16.6 .6 already introduced a nice way of um, adding the same functionality you have with should component update to functional components. So here in this character JS file, in my should component update function, I basically made sure that this component only updates when the selected char or the loaded character or is loading changed. So it should not run when a different side was chosen. Now, if I add a console log here to this character and I'm saying rendering it there, and this is now not in use effect, but it's just in the functional component body. Then you see we have rendering here when this loads and then uh, when we fetch data and so on. And if I go here to dark side, this also gets printed, right? If I clear this here, this renders. But of course, choosing different sides here does not impact this component, which is just this box here at all. So we could use should component update to avoid these re-renders and that's just what I did here. But you can't use should component update in functional components. What you can do, however, is you can wrap your entire component, like here in character.js when you export it, with react.memo. Now memo is a method that was introduced with React 16.6 .6, and it memoizes this component, which means it basically stores it and only when inputs to this component, so the props, change, then it will re-render this. So if we now save this with this addition and I now choose a different side, you don't see rendering anymore because now React detects that this side here is not a prop used in this component at all. If I choose a di different character, then yeah, then I change something that impacts this component. And you see multiple rendering calls here, by the way, because you had this loading state that changes, right? But if I change the side, well, that does not impact this component. It only impacts this dropdown. And therefore React Memo is basically should component update and it automatically knows what to watch for, like pure component, you could say. If you need more control, you can pass a second function there, a second argument, which now is a function that has to return true if, and that's important, has to return true if the props are equal, so if it should not re-render, and return false if it should re-render. That's exactly the different logic you had um, with should component update. So if you would copy your own logic here to return this, if you copy that down there, and then you have to uh, in revert it or invert it. So then you would say, okay, um, this function, by the way, also gets the previous and the next props as arguments. So you get priv props and next props. And now you could say, okay, um, when next props select a char is equal to priv props select a char or and now we can remove this because here it was referring to the state, which is handled internally here anyways. So if I now add this, now if I let this reload, this still uh, updates when I choose something, but if I now choose the dark side, it also doesn't render it. 
Now, of course, this is redundant because React did manage this perfectly for us out of the box. But if you wanted to check it, you have to, you can do it. You can add this extra argument where you return true or false. The important thing just is it works different than should compound update. It's the opposite. You return true if you don't want to re-render and you return false if you want to re-render. Now, again, we don't need that here uh, because uh, we let React detect which props we use. We know that any prop that changes there should trigger an update. So you basically only need that second function if you have props that could change that still shouldn't trigger a re-render. That's not the case here. So we can use the default React functionality. So React memo, another useful addition to React that allows us to use functional components only. Now on my first slide, I also mentioned that hooks can make sharing possibly stateful logic between components easier. And I wanna demonstrate this as well. Now in the character JS component and the char picker component, we're making HTTP requests. We could share this with a custom hook. For this in the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder hooks, but you can name this however you want. And in there, I will add my HTTP JS file. In there, I'll add a new constant, which I'll name use HTTP, and you can name this however you want, but you should start with use, lowercase use at the beginning. That is a convention you don't have to follow, but you definitely should, because it clearly signals that this works like a hook. And then in there, um, you can do whatever you want. You store a function, that's important, it has to be a function, but then you can do what you want. So then I will export um, use HTTP here, or actually, I mean, I will export it like this. And now in here we can add our hook logic. Now, how could this look like? If I go to the char picker, we have this fetch function here. So let me actually cut this and add it here into this function in use HTTP. There I also set is loading and so on. And therefore we probably wanna manage our state in here. So let's import use state from react like this. And then here we can add is loading and set is loading. And uh, we do this by using use state and setting this to false initially. Now the set is loading calls are no problem. Now regarding the characters here, well, I don't know if I'm always be loading characters. I wanna have a reusable HTTP hook here, but I still will manage state but I will actually just manage data here because I don't know the format. If I use that in different components, different components might be fetching different data. It's not always a list of characters and indeed here it won't be, but it will always be some data. So here I named this data. We could also name it fetched data to make it really clear that this is coming from the internet. And um, initially that is null, let's say. Okay, so now we have fetch data and we have our set fetch data call. Now here where I load my chars, of course, I don't wanna uh, load my characters like this. And therefore I will actually comment this out here so that I still have the code for reference when we need it later. And I'll manually set is loading again. But here I will simply set data, set fetch data to my char data or actually I'll just name this argument data here now. I'll set it to the data that I basically got back. Now all the code up there is still fine. Um, I'll just set my data here. Now important, of course, the URL is also not always the same. So we probably get this as an input to this hook. And yes, when you create your own hooks, just as the built-in hooks, you can receive arguments. Use state also takes an argument. So your own hooks can too, as many as you need. So here I get my URL and um, we'll duplicate this to have it still there if I need it later. But here I will now fetch from the URL, which I get. Of course, you could also add a check to see if that really is a URL, but we will keep this simple here. Okay, so now I have a fetch method here or fetch a API where I can send a request to any URL I get. And I set my data and I set loading. Now, of course, it's not that useful if I manage the loading state and the data in this function here. I need that in the component where I will use my custom hook. And therefore I will return something here because hooks can return data. And indeed use state returns something, right? Use state returns an array with two elements. Now important, 
hooks, custom hooks, and all the built-in ones can return all kind of things. They can return a string, a number, an object, or an array. An array with exactly two elements, an array with a dynamic amount of elements, an array with exactly four elements. Anything you need. And here I will return an array actually, but it could be an object too with some uh, properties, but here it will be an array with is loading. So with my is loading state, which I managed in here and with my fetched data. And here, therefore, it is an array that always will have two elements, but that is a pure coincidence. It doesn't have to be. It's not related to use state returning two elements. Okay, now I have my custom hook that returns me information whether I'm loading and which data it fetched. Let's now use this in a char picker by importing it from hooks HTTP and there I import use HTTP. And now here we can use our hook. That leads me to another important thing now. You could say, okay, here in use effect, I previously made my HTTP request, I'll use my hook in here. And there actually are some rules for hooks, not that many, but yet a few important ones. You always must call hooks, no matter if they're built in or your own ones, on the top level of this function. So not nested in another function call as it would be here, not nested in an if statement or a for loop. So this is not allowed. Instead, you can call use HTTP here. Of course, the downside is this now executes uh, whenever the component gets re-rendered. But the good thing, of course, is that we can use use effect in our hook because inside of your own hooks, so in the definition of the function body of your hooks, you are allowed to use other hooks just as we use state here. That is allowed. It's on the top level of this function. In an if statement in here, it would not be allowed. And it's not allowed in use effect because you're not running use HTTP in fact here in use effect, you're running it in an argument you pass to use effect and that's a difference. So we can use use effect here in our use HTTP hook. So let's import use effect and uh, let's, well, use it here just as we used it before, like this. And um, to control when it runs, we probably should get an extra argument from outside, which are our dependencies. And therefore now here I add dependencies, which should be an array as a second argument to use effect. And inside of use effect, I will now execute that fetch logic here, not the return statement, just the fetch logic. And I will also initially set is loading here to true because I forgot this previously. So now I have the same logic as before, but outsourced into this hook and therefore in the char picker, where I used use effect before, I get rid of that. I use HTTP and now there I need to pass my URL and uh, that is this URL, which I saved here. And uh, by the way, I also want a console log sending HTTP request here so that we can see if redundant requests get sent. So I copied my URL and now we pass this as a first argument to use HTTP and the second argument are, are our dependencies. And previously here, that was an empty array because we only want to fetch all characters when the app loads. So I will still pass an empty array here. Now we don't need to manage state for loaded chars or is loading in here anymore because we're now doing this in our hook. The only thing we need to do is we need to make sure we extract the right data. Because in our custom hook, I'm now just storing my fetch data without any adjustments. Uh, previously, I did actually slice um, it to only get a few of the characters that are actually returned by the API. And uh, I also gave uh, set my own name and ID. So we'll cut that code out of the custom hook, go back to the char picker where I get, uh, where I use my custom hook. And that custom hook, of course, returns something, right? It returns is loading and fetch data. So I can again use array destructuring here to get is loading because that's the first element that our custom hook returns and the fetched data. And you can name these elements however you want. Now I add the code I had in my hook previously to get my selected characters. And there I use the fetched data, which I know for this specific um, URL I'm sending the request to will have a results property in the return data. That's just how this API works. Of course, you have to know that in advance. 
Set is loading, not required here. Set loaded chars, also not required anymore. But the selected characters, which are an array of characters, now still need to be mapped. So I can do this with selected characters here. I map them. And of course, I want to store them somewhere. So actually, I can call map right here on that sliced array so that I do store my adjusted characters in selected characters already. So selected characters will now be an array of objects where each character has a name and an ID. And now in the places where I used loaded chars here, I just have to use selected characters now because that is now my property that gets the adjusted data that is returned by my custom hook. And if we save that now, I actually get an error here. Cannot read property results of null. Now why is that? The problem is our own hook here initializes the fetch data with null as a value. And that is the first value it returns because use effect runs after the first render cycle. And therefore we, uh, at the beginning, return fetch, fetch data, which is null. Now what can we do about that? Well, we simply need to be more flexible here. We can check if fetch data is set, so if it's true-ish, and then execute this code, or otherwise set it simply to an empty array. That's all we need to do here. And now if we save this, we send one HTTP request. That is the code in our custom hook, which is in the HTTP.js file. And that's it. If I choose a different character, you never see a log from HTTP.js here because our custom hook doesn't send another HTTP request. So now we can reuse our custom hook logic in the character.js file. Here we can also get rid of should component update and of rendering. And this fetch data call is now effectively what I want to outsource in my custom HTTP hook. So in here, I will uh, first of all import my custom hook. So import use HTTP from the hooks folder and there the HTTP file. And now here we can call use HTTP. We need to pass in that URL, which is now this URL here. So let's pass that, including the prop selected jar, of course. And the second argument here, of course, still are our dependencies. Now, if we have a look at our use effect call where we called fetch data, then we see that this were our dependencies here, prop selected char. So we want to pass that as a second argument here to our use HTTP call. And uh, now with that, we still get back some data here, of course. And the data we get back is the same data as before. So it will be the is loading state and the fetched data. So we go back to character JS, get is loading and the fetched data. And now again, we have the generic use HTTP hook that makes the HTTP request, but makes no assumptions on what to do with our data. And therefore it just stores the fetch data and returns it to us. We can therefore transform the fetch data just as we did it in the char picker here we can now transform the fetch data in the character component here. So the logic we had in here where I created the loaded character object, I can cut this from there and actually get rid of that entire fetch data thing here. We don't need that anymore. Get rid of the commented out code here and get rid of that use effect hook here. So get rid of all of that and add loaded character here. Now here I initialize this with data from char data, which doesn't exist anymore. This is now fetch data. But of course, fetch data might not be set right as we had it in the char picker component. And therefore it makes sense to add a if check here where we said if fetched data, then I wanna set my loaded character. Initially, let's say we set our loaded character here to um, null. But if we do have fetch data, then we don't initialize this as a constant, but we override our loaded character here. And instead of char data, this is now all fetched data here. And of course here the if statement is fine because inside of it, I'm not executing any hook. I'm using data from a hook, but that is fine. I'm just not calling a hook in here. And therefore now I set my loaded character to either null or to uh, this object with the data we fetched. And um, I leave use effect here to demonstrate component did unmount. And then if I go down, 
here I check if we have a loaded character ID, then I wanna output data about that. Well, instead of checking loaded character ID, I can now just check if loaded character is set. And therefore I will check if loaded character, then we output this down there. If not loaded character, then we render failed to fetch. And uh, now let's also get rid of our use state assignments here at the beginning. And of course we can remove the use state import also in the char picker, by the way, there we can also get rid of the use effect import, of course, because we're not using it here in character JS. I am still using use effect for this unmount demo. And now this uh, reloads and it looks good. We sent two HTTP requests, one for all our persons and one for um, the person that should be loaded. And to make this even clearer, of course, we can fine tune the console log here and send an HTTP request to URL and then output the URL we got as an argument here in our custom hook. So that now we say, okay, one was sent to get all people with this uh, URL and one was sent for a specific person with that ID one. And if I now switch to Darth Vader, we see that one other request and only one is sent to four. And if I switch to the dark side, nothing happens. If I destroy, nothing happens. So besides that being destroyed and the cleanup running, of course. That are React hooks. And that was a lot of stuff in this video, but I hope it helps you understand them. It can be confusing to see this, and it is a brand new way of thinking about component creation. But it's a powerful way. Being able to write our own custom hooks is a nice feature, because whilst of course this can be strange at the beginning when you move stuff around, it really helps you to save code to centralize logic, stateful logic, because we are managing state in that hook, and then share it between all components that need it. But even besides custom hooks, which are an awesome feature, hooks allow you to build everything with functional components. That is not strictly better than class-based components, but it can save you redundant refactoring work for all these cases where you found out, oh, this component needs to manage state. Now I need to change it from a functional to a class-based one. This is uh, now the past and it simply allows you to learn one way of creating components. It can be different to get into that if you're used to the old way, but you should definitely give it a try and just build stuff with it. Use state and use effect are the most important hooks which are shipping with React, but there are more which you can learn about in the official docs. For example, for working with references or context. Building custom hooks is a very nice feature and one thing you should also learn are these rules of hooks, where the most important rule is that you must not use hooks in if statements or for statements or in function calls, but only use them at the top level of your function. That is also important. With that, I hope that this video helped you understand them. Um, if you liked it, feel free to subscribe, like the video, turn on uh, notifications for this channel, obviously, and hopefully see you in other videos. Bye.